Hello again, Ian Stuckey with Mastermind Games. Back for more Malifaux, and this time, Zoraida's henchman, Bad Juju. Shield Brown, 0961. Originally human, Bad Juju, the Meyer Golem, which may have been its original name in first edition. I can't remember and have not looked at the first edition books for quite some time. But Bad Juju was a man who tried to renege on a deal he made with Zareda, so she cursed him and turned him into an ever-regenerating... Oh boy, this is really about empty. I don't have enough paint in here, I'm going to have to get in my spare, which is fine. But I'm getting back on track. To paraphrase a line from an old Swamp Thing TV show from the late 80s, early 90s, she turned him into a muck-encrusted mockery of a man bound to eternal servitude. Any time Bad Juju is destroyed, he simply reforms. Next time Zareda happens to need him. Oh. There's a lot of detail in here, and there's every probability I'm going to have to alter my color scheme. In just the few minutes before I started, I noticed a rock I hadn't seen before, and some beetles I hadn't seen before. So, there's... Really hoping I've got enough shield brown here. And now I just noticed there are some worms crawling through him. But bad juju is muscle. And that's that's his role. He's the uh, smasher. All right, I'm going to need to get that other bottle of paint out. So one moment, I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, that little faux pas aside, everything is fixed now. I've got my spare bottle out, shield brown. And one neat thing about Reaper Master Series is they tend to use either a colorful glass bead or even better, a little skull as an agitator in their paint. So it's kind of like 1980s cereal boxes, where there'd actually be a good prize in them. Now. So, details on here include plenty of skulls, trees, rocks, various insect life, well, I believe worms are worms are annelids, but it's a technicality. The voodoo fetish doll, which symbolically represents the soul bound to bed, Juju. It looks like, based on the concept on the uh, artwork shown in the third edition books, that uh, bad Juju is also in line for a new sculpt. Featuring a boat in his back. This is second edition. That's also again another reason to when you're dealing with mo multiples of the same model to number your cards. So you can quickly and easily tell what model has taken how much damage or is where, etc. solid coat on the wood. All right, I think that's got it, so let's do some stone. No, nope, I missed a little bit on the right hand here. I didn't have too many troubles assembling bad juju, just a few, uh, mostly with the vines. But that 
still on pretty easily. Uniform gray. I don't need too much of this. But there are some rocks. Oh, this is not focusing very well. I am still, I am working on it. I will get there eventually. However, I also only have one shot to do any given video properly. And I'm not going to uh, just stop my, put my hobby just dead in its tracks just to, uh, I'm not going to slow down that much. I guess that's the best way of putting it. Okay. Alright. So I think this knee here is also a stone. And I'm going to call that good for now. Yeah, I want to call that good for now and let that dry before moving on. This is going to be both simple and complex simultaneously, color-wise, so... Oh boy! Technical glitch is coming. Alright. Okay, are we cool here? Kind of. Alright, back in a bit. Alright. Leaf Green 09011. The wooden stone isn't completely dry, but I'm going to move on anyway and do some incidental blending. It'll just kind of happen on its own. Keeping the brush moist but not overly wet. Let's go over these clumps here. The exact amount of water to use is, well, that's one of the tougher questions actually to answer. I find that keeping your brush moist but not too wet works best for base coats. But you know, everyone's going to have their own style. I am showing a way to paint things, not the only way to paint things. So overall, this is pretty conventional color scheme-wise. It's what you would expect, but I'm gonna add my own thing to it, especially when I come to the, well. We'll say I've got ideas, so we'll just see how they work out. I am well aware I just nicked the voodoo doll, and that's fine. It'll come out when I do the coloration for that. Probably going to end up nicking quite a few of the skulls as well, but that's okay too. textures here. That right there looks more like wood. So I'll just go back in with that wood, that shield brown again to dab it right there. Also seems to have a stone in it, so 
go back in with a uniform gray. So a fair bit of green in there, and that's fine. Now, I'm not doing the vines right now. This is going to be done in a different shade later. Skull, skull, tropical root. Okay. There are a lot of neat textures here. Wood, stone, moss, insects, and other plant and animal life. I think that's about got it for now, so I'm going to let that dry completely now, and then go on with some more details in a bit. Oh boy, my computer's acting up again. All right. Okay. The joys of technical difficulties strike again, so it was a pretty solid start on the painting anyway, so back in a bit. Okay. Let's see here. Banshee Brown. This is just going on a little voodoo doll tied to uh, what passes for its neck. That is too thick. I'm just going to spread that around a little more. And then... Where I put it, yellow bone zero nine one four three. Which is about shot by a spare on him when I need it. Let's just switch brushes here. I seem to be missing one. I don't know where I put it. from who knows what the upper jaws on these two look a bit long to be human but there's plenty of non-human things in Malifo. I think this is bone as well. Two on the back. Well, two human on the back. There's still this big gator skull here. Looks like I'm at least reasonably focused. Let's miss a spot right here. Let's give that a minute. I'm going to take some uh, rosy skin. And this is number zero, uh, 09068. It's been a while since I used this one. The label's a bit faded. And some, no, that's actually a vine. Rub that off. What are those? There's the worms. Okay, let's see any other worms. No, not that I can see. I'm really going to try to finish base coats here. So, pure black 09037 going over the back again. I don't know if they were intended to be, but I see these as uh, beetle shells, so we're going to treat them like that. 
So starting with black, and when I'm done, it'll be kind of iridescent. And uh, I'm hearing bad noises, but I think I'm okay. All the green 09035. This one uh, kind of position like a G string almost. These these vines were the most difficult thing to figure out, in part because it looked like they could have gone on multiple ways. Now, generally speaking, looking at the 3D renders on the box will help figure things out. As we're looking at uh, the instructions Weird puts online, but not always, because sometimes it seems that they use pre-production renders for those instructions and uh, box art as opposed to the final product, which causes problems when you're trying to rely on them to... Uh, do this right. I'm gonna make sure I don't miss anything. I'm gonna have to touch up some of the brown on this leg and the uh, back here. And then I'll do that a little later on. But same brown 09160. And I'll do some touch ups off camera. And when this all dries up, I can start shading. Let's use something a little bigger. Again, uh, just a custom sculpted base insert here. Up some of the wood and move on to shame once this all dries up. So I'll go. All right, time to do some shading. Oh, sparkling blue zero nine one zero four. This is a metallic blue, which is plugged up. So paper clip down the hole. This is really, there we go. That uh, came out very erratically. That's not good because I just wasted a bunch of paint. Thinning with one part water, one part paint to make it into a wash. And I'm gonna go over the black on the carapaces here. This should, when combined with the highlight, I'm gonna use an iridescent look. Rosy, rosy shadows are nine zero six seven. As long as I'm looking at the uh, worms crawling through it. Which, for some reason, gets me thinking of a movie called Squirm that was lampooned on on a Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Which, as they described it during an introduction. Basically the same plot as Jurassic Park, except replacing the tropical island with the deep south and replacing the reanimated dinosaurs with earthworms. St. Ivory 09142. Yeah, I should be able to do all of these ones here. Well, 
my flow, especially into the eye sockets. If done right, this will go into the recesses, and while it will mock, oh, but I cannot speak anymore, Nate. Well, it'll alter your base coat somewhat. It won't be that substantial. You'll still want your base coat nice and solid overall. I don't know why I keep whispering when I do this. It's uh, a really strange habit that I don't know when I picked up. Khaki Shadow 09121. about cashed. I just need a little bit of this. None of these make the loveliest noise when they are running thin. Alright, that little might be enough. Maybe. I guess that's gonna do. All right, I've got to I think about a spare of this on hand, so let's get that aside so I pull it out later. And Muddy Olive 09034. And I'm going to need at least two more layers of shading. I think I can do the green and the brown and the stone. I'll make that three because I'll have to do the base separate. That's all right. I can do the basic ones with lighting effects. I'm just getting these vines here. If it blends a bit with the ivory, I'm going to say that's okay. Okay. Let that dry completely, then I can uh, do a few layers. Oh, and I dropped about 150 frames in the blink of an eye. The joys of technical difficulties strike again in the worst ways. All right, back in a minute. All right, one of the big ones. Well, probably the big one. Pine Green 09010. medium in it, not enough pigment. Let's we'll see how it goes. Just uh, make sure you're shaking your paints real thoroughly. Being careful around the voodoo doll here. So I'm just going to get all the green now. And I think next I'll be able to do the, probably the stone and the brown and prep some lighting effects. And then finish up with actually doing the lighting effects as well as the shading on the base. So this is going fairly quickly, pretty straightforward color scheme. Nothing too terribly complex about it outside of uh, playing around with the shade and highlighting on those beetles. Now, let's see over here. I'll flip around and there's a little bit of the green on this stone here. Sometimes details on these models are going to be interpretive. It's possible these may not have been meant to be beetles, but they look enough like them to me that that's what I'm uh, painting them like. And I am going to play around with some highlights when I hit that step. Here. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna finish up the legs first before I get the arms. Doesn't look so much like Swamp Thing as it looks like Man Thing, which is uh, Swamp Thing is technically a Marvel Comics character. Man Thing is the or no, Swamp Thing's DC. Man Thing is the Marvel Comics equivalent. You'll find a lot of if you look at comic books uh, characters between Marvel and DC that rip off something from the other group. Deadpool, for example, started out as a parody of. Deathstroke from DC Comics. And that's pretty good, so I'm gonna let that dry and move on when it does. Definitely a muck and crust of mockery of a man. Alright. That green's drying in some place, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on and just roll with it if it blends. Stormy Grazer and Android 8. You know what, I'm going to prep some lighting effects first with matte white. That way it'll be uh, dried up by the time I am hitting that step. Using just enough water to thin the paint, so I am just picking out what look to me like eye spots and I got a little too much water in here. I think I can roll with it. I want to do a hateful red lighting. To make that shine through, I need to pick out some spots first to lighten up. That's going to include the interior of the mouth. So I didn't spend too much time on uh, shading it. That should do. Now the stormy gray zero nine zero eight eight. Thinning that one out. One part water, one part paint. Get the knee stones here. One on the shoulder. And on the back here, being careful around the moss and the beetles. Or again, what I'm interpreting as beetles. And Woodstain Brown 09160. Same color I used to start the base with. See a little puddle on the right foot there. Some of the green is still wet. It's a bit on the uh, right knuckle as well. And I am just going with it. So next, being careful around the skulls. If it gets on them a little bit, that's fine though. Again, this is an entity that was 
referred to, that's referred to in the fiction as a Meyer Golem or the Meyer Golem. here and that's blending in a lot that happened. Fly there, a little patch. Keep my brush nice and wet. Go ahead and finish up this leg before I move on to the other one. I'm hearing all the noises and I'm dropping frames like madness again. Alright. So just stay away for half a second here. Kinda. Uh, the joys of technical difficulty strike again. I am just gonna wrap this up, let it dry, go from there. roots and branches twisting together <laughs> to a very crude yet powerful looking humanoid form. It's got it, so let that dry when I come back. I can do the lighting and the base and uh, go from there. Uh, 212 frames dropped in a blank of an eye. Oh, good gravy. Alright, let's see if I can avoid any technical difficulties this time. Vampire Red. So this isn't completely dry, not the last layer, but I think it's dry enough I can move on. Now this is going to be the lighting effect. I want the eyes, you know, to be emitting this hateful, red, angry glow. So thinning with two to three parts water to one part paint. Trick is for some of your light to show through. This is a not the only way to do a lighting effect, but it is a pretty quick one. So who says he's got to have just one optical orifice? Not necessarily, uh, they're not necessarily eyes, but a little more inside the mouth. It's not bad, that should dry about how I want it. Just a little more here on this one. No, just a, that's too much. Blot some of that out. There we go. And then pure black 09037 again. three parts water to one part paint because it's a particularly dark color. And go over the base.
Yeah, it's blending with some of the uh, brown from earlier, and that's okay. All right. Let that dry completely, then I can start highlighting. All right, time to highlight. You know, I am going to start on the base first, I think, so Shield Brown 09161. This is a new pot, so maybe a little extra mixing. Yeah, that little dot will be enough. Let me try this a little differently. So, ragged feathered brush, something along the lines of that. No water, straight paint only. Rubbing most of it out on a paper towel so it looks like there's nothing left. And dusting the area to be effective. Now it's got a little too much paint, but it'll work. It'll be okay. Everyone's entitled to make a mistake now. Now Driftwood Brown 09162. The highlighting goes fairly quickly when the paint dries. Not quite, but close to instantly, which means one, it goes this goes pretty fast, but two, it also only gives you a couple of seconds to fix any mistakes you might make. So just keep that in mind while painting. that up, I think. Get these saplings, these gnarled branches coming out of his shoulders first. And I'll move down the arm. That has too much. I'm just going to rub some of that off of my thumb real quick. Was that clunk? I'm going to guess it's my shower caddy falling off the wall. We'll just see. I'm coming right back right now. <clears throat> Pale green zero nine zero one two. Oh, I just realized I missed a little bit. That wood here. The uh, hip, the thigh. There we go. Caught it early. Now pale green. Make sure I'm still uh, kind of focused. This is. I will get this right eventually. I'm gonna keep trying till I do. Okay, and I just dropped 200 frames in the blink of an eye. Good grief.
You know, even 20 years ago in the 90s, we as a society would demand technology that actually worked and would demand refunds and recalls if it didn't. I think we should get back to that. We are so used to having to put up with shoddy goods that we just don't even fight it anymore. That's not right. We should demand equipment that works. Mr. Gray, zero nine zero nine zero. All right. Spice me much more. I'm going to have to just stop here. Misty Gray. Okay, this is gonna be the last run from this pot. It's about gone. But I don't need much. That little bit'll do. I have a spare on hand. Checking my computer. Okay, I'm gonna try to fix this thing with my computer, so I'm gonna come back in a minute. Alright, grown, just grown, but almost done. The khaki highlights are nine one two three next. This one's also about gone. Okay, but not as bad as the other one, so I don't I just need a tiny dot of it. So all this is going on. Is the voodoo doll here? Pale Olive zero nine zero three six. Don't need too much of this either. Little brush. Little brush. Zero nine one four four. Just plugged up. That's why I keep a paper clip handy. That burst out. That's not good, but I've got a spare, so I'm not that worried. Could be just random detritus from the swamp. Rosy highlight zero nine zero six nine. Zero nine one zero three.
don't need much of this either. This is a metallic green. And when combined with the blue shading of the black base coat, should give a reasonable iridescent color. That worked out pretty close to what I was thinking about, but I think I need to tweak the formula a bit more. That's not bad. And then just for a little extra color, Sun Yellow 09008. Which is also wearing thin, that'll be plenty. And I'm just going to dry brush this on selectively in a few areas, maybe here. Just add a little color here and there. I think that's enough, actually. We'll put it right here. Just need to add a little more color there. And now to finish up with pure black 09037. Oh boy, frame drop. Are we stable? Holy moly, twice in one session trying to fix this. Now I don't know if it's focusing. Focus. There we are. Holy moly. So pure black, 09037. And I'm switching over to a flat brush, keeping it moist but not too wet. Just enough water in there to thin the paint out. And I'm just lining the edge of the base. Okay, well, and as I did that, the computer decided to conk out again. All right, come back in a sec. All right, well, that went pretty well up until the end where I think decided to go screaming yellow zonkers on me. But that is it. Bad juju from the Neverborn faction of Malifo. Got one more thing from Zarea's box set. Well, at least her second edition box set. We'll come to that next. Until uh, then, I'm Ian Stuckey with Mastermind Games, signing out.